Hey VC, welcome to my how to grade LP records. It's really important when you're going to sell some records on eBay or what have you, you've got to grade them properly because if they're not graded right, uh, they'll just send them back and you'll end up wasting, uh, money. it'll cost you money. Just like if you don't ship it properly, it's going to cost you money in the long run. And if it's not graded properly, it's going to cost you money because when you say, this record is in pristine condition, it's near mint, and then that person gets it and it's full of scratches. That's not what they what they uh, bought, and that's not what you described. So under eBay buyer protection, that item is now not as described, and they can they can get a full refund for the money. They can send it back to you. So you, you don't want that happening. And there's been people in VC been asking me, because they want to list records on eBay, and they want to know, Ron, how do you grade your records? Well. I've been doing this for 10 years on eBay selling records. I've never once had anybody say that the record wasn't graded right. Because you've got to list every single fault, every single defect on that record. And as another person was saying in, in one of the threads on there, one of my videos, he was talking about how most uh, people on eBay are only going to visually grade records. And I get a lot of them. What they'll do, they'll take that record and they'll look at it under the normal lighting condition. And when you look at that record under normal lighting condition, and you look at it, man, it doesn't have a flaw. It's perfect. You can't see a single flaw. And you look at every single inch of that record, and there's not a thing wrong with it. And they'll say, it's near mint. But guess what happens? When I get home, I take it, and I start putting it under this light. Have a look up here. And you see these lights, a capot light type, where you've got that, the light is shining directly out of there. And now, I can really look at that record. I can put that, that light, that beam right on that record. And now I can see the truth. I can see there's all kinds of little hairline scratches on this record. And so, I've got to tell the people about every one of these little hairline scratches on there. Because there's a lot of folks out there, they're like me, they're real picky. And when the guy says it's mint, I want it to be mint. I don't want it full of scratches. And so, now in grading the record, if I get the record and I look at it, and I can't see for the life of me, and I'm under this bright direct light now, I can't see any fault. There's not a fingerprint. There's not a piece of dust. I mean, it's there's nothing on there. And another thing, too, you've got the spindle hole. And, you know, when people go to put their records on, they bounce it around on top of the spindle, and they'll put all the little marks on top of here. That's called a spindle hole mark. You've got, if there's spindle hole marks, people want to know about it. They want you to, to, to just describe that, because that shows how many, how much that record's been played. That's another indicator. And this record, it's got, you know, it's got a fair amount of spindle hole marks. I can probably see uh, 10 of them on this side. And there's even more on this side, spindle hole marks. Because this record I bought used probably 25 years ago at a, as a used record store. And uh, I haven't played it that much. And, and since I've gone through my coll record collection, I'm trying to purify it. I'm trying to get everything pristine. I noticed that this one was not pristine. And when I looked at it, I saw a few scratches here, a few little light things. And you know... 90% of this stuff on here, you won't even hear it because it's it's so light, it, it won't, it's not audible. But the only way to find out if it is audible is when I do come across something like I see right here. I say, oops, that doesn't look very nice at all. It looks like a, actually a scratch on there. And it's right on the leading groove. So now, we better listen to that. Because that's something you can't tell by just looking at it, what it's going to do on the record. Oh, when you hear that, you click, click, click. That's that scratch. And really, at this point for me, 
This is record is a piece of junk. I'm not selling that. I can't sell this now. Because you know why? I don't want to. I'm not going to own a, a record like this. I personally don't want, want a record like that. And so I'm, I can't sell it. And uh, so that goes over here on this, this bin I got over here, which is, you know, the LPs that I won't sell. And now in grading, the different grades that I use, if you take a, a record and you look at it, like I said before, and you cannot see a thing, a fingerprint, a hairline, nothing. No spindle hole marks. Everything is perfect on that. That would be pristine. I would, I would describe it as the record is pristine, looks unplayed, because that's exactly what it looks like. And that doesn't mean it looks new, because you can take a brand new record right out of the, the shrink and you'll have scratches on it, especially the new ones. They, they come like that, with little hairline scratches on them. Now, and the more and more of these little hairline scratches you get on the record, that's what causes your surface noise. Static electricity will cause a lot of surface noise, but after you clean them and play them a few times, or you, or you can use, I've got a few things in here, zero stat, that'll take static off. And then you've got, you know, your little carbon fiber brushes, that helps take some static off. But for the most part, uh, after you play them, they, the static's off of it, and you can still hear noise. And you look at the record; there's a lot of scratches. On it. That's what causes that that background noise. So if I look at it, it's pristine. That would be rated pristine. Now if I look at it, and one side looks like basically pristine. There's no spindle hole marks. Everything's nice, and maybe I see one little teeny little hairline that's about you know an eighth of an inch long. Okay, and I look on the other side and maybe about the same thing. Basically it's perfect, but just this one little teeny something somewhere that you really can't even hardly see, but it's just there about an eighth of an inch long little sleeve mark or something. That's near mint. I didn't say it was mint, it's near mint. But it's almost, it's almost pristine, but it's, it's not quite there. That would be near mint. Now the next grade would be where I'd say I might find three or four of those little lines, maybe, maybe five little hairlines up to three, four, five on each side. Now I'm talking EX plus. And then when I start getting into up to maybe 10, five to 10 of little hairlines per side, that would be EX. But I'm going to use that in my description. I'm going to say that for EX, it will be, there are a very few, very fine hairlines on the record surface, which do not sound, the record still plays near mint. When you play it, you won't hear any surface noise, maybe the odd click, but you know, our, our odd little thing on there, but for the most part, it plays near mint. But you can still, under that bright light now, I can still see a couple little hairlines here and there. And after it gets past where you've gotten, you're getting 10 or so or more marks aside, that's when I, I cut it off. I don't, I don't want to sell those types of records. And uh, I don't have any, any problem. And most people say that I graded accurately. And so uh, I guess that will uh, conclude the uh, how to grade records.